Hi, I'm Ian Anderson, an Apple Certified Trainer, and in this tutorial we're going to look at the new features of CoreMelt Slice X in FCP10. We're going to look at a few clips and see what we're going to do with them in this tutorial. We're going to take this clip and we're going to change the colour of her hair. We're going to take this clip and add some depth of field to make things further away look blurry. And we're going to take this guitar and make it glow. Now, animating shape keyframes like this is not something you can do with the built-in tools. It's called rotoscoping in the industry. Now, for this clip, we're going to add another core melt effect, Luma S-Curve, just to get a bit of uh, contrast back in. It was shot on a uh, flat profile on a DSLR. And then we're going to add Color Correct Shape Mask in C2 Slice X, and it has a new, few new features from the last revision. As in the last version, we'll start with a default shape, which we'll ignore for now, but see what we're doing by setting the color to pink. Uh, before we use this uh, freeform tool, which works fine, uh, but does create a lot of points. Because we're now going to be animating the points, we really don't want too many. So I'm going to use the Bezier tool instead. I'm going to click and drag to create new points. And if you're familiar with Adobe Illustrator, you'll be quite happy with this. It's very similar controls. You click to put an anchor point, but then immediately drag to set the handles around that anchor point and influence the path of the curve. You want to try to make exactly enough points to get a good shape. And this is something you will get better at with practice if you haven't done it before. Uh, if you can't get it quite right, you could increase the shape softness, which will just soften the edges of this path. Now, before we go any further, you'll want to press this new button, Enable and Disable Keyframing for Points. And when we press this, we get a new display, which at the moment is all greyed out. To get a bit more space, I'm just going to hide the inspector, because we don't need to see those options for now. OK, so we've got this shape, and we want to turn keyframing on, what we want to do is simply move, we can just jiggle one of those points by a tiny amount, or correct the position of one if it does need corrected. And now these other buttons become active. We've got delete the current keyframe and delete all the keyframes. What we can do is scrub forward in time until the position starts to change. So maybe there, I'm going to option click on the clip to move the playhead and keep that clip selected and now move all these points around. All of these are going to be recorded in the shape keyframe at that point in time. Now, be careful. I'm going to undo that last one. If you move the blue points, which is easy to do, you're actually adjusting the scale, which is not terribly helpful. You want to be sure you exclusively adjust the shape anchor points. So I'd go through the clip few more until maybe that movement's finished, like say there, option click again, and basically just record a new keyframe adjusting all the shape points at the extremes of any movement. Once you've put in all the keyframes at the extremes, you could travel back through all of these points uh, using the previous and next keyframe buttons, like that, and you could even step to new points between all of these recorded keyframes and simply create new ones by changing the positions at that point. So I could continue that for the rest of the clip and I could go back and let's say if I wasn't happy with the position just exactly there, then I just move that anchor point around and it creates a new keyframe. Could also of course command minus to zoom out if I can't see all of the points. Now, here's the one I prepared earlier, in which I've tracked the hair all the way through the clip and changed the colour to yellow. I think you'll agree that's pretty effective. And if I press Command 4 and bring my inspector back up, and I'll make sure I option click on that clip, I can change the colour to whatever I want. The more you try to get away with, the harder it is to get away with it, but you can get away with quite a bit. Also, you should note the S-curve graph is visible because we option clicked on this clip and both filters were selected. Let's move on. I'm going to option click on this clip, up arrow to get back to that first frame, which is a good place to start, and we'll look at the depth of field shape mask. And I'm going to, oops, command minus, okay, start with the shape and I'm going to click and I'm going to follow the line of the building, 
drag out and down and back up again. There we go. And you'll see the top area becomes blurry. Now I can change the softness to give a better gradation between that. So that's with a very sharp gradation and that's with a much softer one. And of course you can change how blurry it gets inside as well. The same technique as before applies. I might press shift right arrow, right arrow to maybe jump forward uh, two seconds in this case. Make sure that keyframing is active and in fact shift left a couple of times back. Make sure I've recorded a keyframe there. Make sure they all go yellow. Shift right arrow twice again and move these points around. Make sure I'm still following the same line across through the buildings. Shift right, move them again. Okay. Now, as before, here's one I prepared earlier. Get rid of the inspector and zoom that one up. And you'll see if I play it. That looks fine. A couple of things you'll probably want to know about changing this. To bring back the on-screen displays, click on the name of the filter and you'll see these uh, on-screen controls will pop back up. If you need to jump between keyframes, just use these two buttons here and it will jump between all the keyframes that you've set. If you need to grab a group of anchor points at once to move them all around, then you can hold down the command key and drag a box to select them all, and then move them all at once, which can be quite useful if an object is moving in frame rather than, say, turning. As well as that, you may also wish to perhaps change the shape of the path you've drawn, changing the effect of an anchor point from smooth to straight or linear. So if I was to option click on one of the points in the shape, I can choose interpolation, forcing it to be linear to the previous point or to the next point. I can also reintroduce curves either way, which will return it back to the handles as before. For the last demo, we've got this guitar clip here, which works pretty well. We're going to now add another effect to it. We're going to option click on the clip, up arrow to come back, and we're going to find another effect. We're going to look though in Cormel Complete in the C2 Luminous pack, and we're going to find the Optical Glow filter. Now there it is, if we drag that onto the clip. The reason we're tracking back into Cormel Complete is to show you that nearly all of the Cormel Complete effects have now got the same masking controls as the new Slice X does. I'm happy with the default glow effect. What I'm going to look at though is to hit that Use Mask button. And now I've got the same on-screen controls as the other filters we've looked at. First I'm going to draw a quick shape, but whoops, I've drawn it in the wrong place, so I'll quickly finish the shape and go back to the tool to start again. Click, then click and drag, click and drag again, keep clicking and dragging, and I want the shape to really go where it's going to be, so I'll have to command minus to just zoom that out, expand a little bit, and figure out where the shape is going to be. I'll try to anticipate where the keyframes are going to be. For here I'm just going to extend that handle just a little bit, zoom back in with Shift Z, and that looks okay. I'll have changed the glow width if I wanted to, but probably the softness of the mask is important. If blur mask is ticked, then pushing blur strength affects the softness of the edge of the mask. Make sure I turn on keyframing, move one of the anchor points around to make sure that keyframe has been recorded at that time, and as before, I can scrub through until I perhaps find an extreme of movement, maybe there, then move all the points on the shape around as before. Uh, if controls get in your way, just move them out of the way by dragging it. And again, you may need to hit Command minus if things are still in the way. I'll keep moving the points about for now, but that's looking pretty good. Um, I might use Shift right arrow just to move forward a second. If there's no extremes of movement, that's a pretty good option. The same process as before, except we're going to use Use Mask in a Cormel Complete effect. Here's one I prepared earlier, and that looks pretty good. It's also worth remembering that if you do make a keyframe in the wrong place, like for example I've put a keyframe here, moved the shape around, but then 
found out it was actually the wrong place to put it, I can press this button to delete the keyframe and perhaps then jump back to the previous keyframe and adjust that one if that's what I really needed to do. So you do have your delete keyframe and delete all keyframes, effectively to start again from scratch. So there you go, the new features of Cormelt Slice X, which let you use animated shape keyframes to change the appearance of part of a clip as it moves, changing colour, depth of field, and much more besides. If you'd like a free trial or an update to your existing copy of Slice X, just head to cormelt.com. Thanks for watching.